Morning guys, welcome back to the firm. It is a super cold day here, at least for our area. You can see here, as long as it's not backwards, I guess. It's minus 22 with a wind chill of minus 33, so that's pretty cold. Um, unfortunately, our corn silo was, well, the unloader, it was froze this morning. Couldn't get that going. I don't know what's going on with it. I think there's something froze up with the auger on it. I got the blower to turn. I was up there twice this morning. I got the blower to turn, but the auger is stuck, so we're going to have to just not feed corn silage, I guess, till it thaws out. It's supposed to warm up here. Um, well, it's supposed to warm up Sunday, and then I think Monday morning it's supposed to be above freezing again. So, anyway, I just came over here. I wanted to check some of these water bowls because they were froze this morning. That one's okay-ish. Uh, there's like a hole in the wall here. You see the bale is kind of blocking it right now. But there's a hole in the wall there. It's actually for the cats to come in and out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the wind was blowing in there and uh, froze it up. And that gate in the back of the parlor, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the cold or not, but it seems to have stopped functioning. So yeah that might be a problem probably gonna end up having to take the cylinder off of it the air like the pneumatic cylinder and uh yeah just put on a rope or something for now until we get that valve thawed out or fixed or whatever so i mean you can see everything's pretty frosty in here i'll turn this around yeah you can see everything's pretty cold and frosty it's not so bad in the milk house. We got a little heater going. I'll show you guys that in a minute. We got a little heater going out there. But uh yeah, things out in the freestyle are pretty cold. The water tubs, the big tubs where the cows haven't froze. Um we were having trouble with this. Yeah, it's frozen again. So that well, that one's freezing. Uh I'll, I'll thaw that out, I guess. Um but yeah, the big tubs out in the freestyle they're fine and the ones for the heifers up the far end they haven't froze either so we're still good there so i'll show you the little heater we got we used to have a heat pump in the milk house i guess some of it's still here you can see it up in the corner there but that stopped working a couple years ago so we gave up on that and we just got this little electric heater sitting here in the floor and i mean it's not going to you know, it's not gonna be 20 degrees in here or anything like that, but it's gonna keep things above freezing. There's a thermometer here. Uh, what do we got? It's about six. What do you guys think? Six degrees or so? I don't know, six or seven degrees, I guess. So, not balmy by any means, but warm enough. Um, yeah, warm enough so things don't freeze. Used to be nice when we had the heat pump that would heat up the whole area here and it was you know pretty pretty warm in here but uh yeah it doesn't work anymore it's warmer in here anyway when we're milking because the cooler blows hot air into the milk house so um that helps but anyway so i just thought i'd give you guys a little update here on the uh, cold temperatures i think that's kind of a uh thing people are talking about around uh, today or whatever because it's like super cold um so yeah so i just wanted to check this one down here where the big heifers are and uh, that one's all right too most of them kind of i didn't say most of them but a good few of them kind of sneak their head over the wall here and reach into that tub to drink anyway if all else fails they do do that too but Anyway, those tubs have been staying all right. But you can see the frost here just from blowing in around the the door. So everything else is pretty good. I got that uh, water bowl, other one down there thawed out. It's not, like the calf doesn't drink out of it or nothing. We just don't want it to freeze solid really. Basically is what's going on there. And uh, yeah, I don't remember what I said about the silo before, but anyway, I got the, the blower spins fine, but there's something going on. I think the auger is froze, stuck. Um, 
I can rock the pulley back and forth a little bit. I so much just whatever play is in that gearbox and the and the auger itself, I guess. But it just stops. So that's kind of what's holding it up there. Well, I was gonna plug the 6280 in just in case we needed it to move some snow or pull the milk truck out of the driveway tomorrow morning or something, but. Ah, I couldn't get the doors open in the middle building and it froze shut. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably have to reattempt that one later. Um, I don't know, it, it's it's kind of shitty because it was mild right before it froze. Like it was plus two or something like that Friday morning. And then it just dropped through the day. And then, yeah, it just got worse overnight. And then this morning it was whatever minus 23 or something like that when I got up so yeah so that anything that was you know everything got soft and, and wet or whatever in the in the mild weather and then it just froze solid so I assume there must have been some water in the track of the door or whatever and it kind of just froze when it got cold so anyway uh yeah I might be able to put a bar on it or something and pry it open I guess and get in there and plug the tractor in but uh, we'll reattempt that after lunch, I guess. See how that goes. If you guys can see that or not, it's like smoke on the water. Well, it's the next day. It's warmed up a little bit. It was like minus 15 this morning. I'm not sure what the wind chill was, but it's warmed up to like, I don't know, minus five or six right now. So that's not too bad. Here in the shop right now, I haven't been working here over the last couple of days because of the cold. Uh, this shop is uninsulated. I mean, it's got a furnace in the back, but you'd be fighting just to get it above freezing. So I haven't bothered. But uh, before it turned cold, I did get those wheel centers uh, in epoxy primer, like I said I was going to. Uh, it's white. I ran it out of the gray and the black that I had. I wouldn't use black on it anyway because they're going to be orange, but I ran it at other colors. So I got white left. Uh, I painted them in white. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just a base to uh, put the filler on because there is quite a bit of pitting in that. I'm not going to show you guys, but there is quite a bit of pitting in them and, and whatnot. And I got to put some filler on it and kind of smooth everything out. So once I put the filler on top of the epoxy primer, uh, then I can shoot it with gray primer anyway. So it's all going to be the same anyway. Uh, and then the orange or power red technically. So. Anyway, I got, thought I'd show you guys that. Oh, and Dad's uh, 68JX is here. The axle is under it again. I don't remember if I showed it in the last video or not. He had the axle out of it. And, uh, yeah, he had the axle out of it and fixed the pivot on it. And then now he's doing the knuckles and everything. So you can see the knuckles and planetaries are all tore apart. So he's busy uh, fixing that up. But he hasn't been here this weekend either because he's not even home. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's what the 60HX is up to, I guess. So, anyway, working project, work in progress. Uh, so anyway, yeah, thus concludes uh, this quick video. I guess I got other stuff to do. Luckily, it's warming up, so uh, we did get that corn silo unplugged. I think I got a clip of that or something. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.